A friend of mine reached out to me recently who is relatively new to the space and they wanted to purchase a secondhand firewall to play around with. And I thought that was a great idea. But then I told him a cheaper alternative. As long as he had an old spare PC, he could just spin one up for free. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you how you can do the same using PFSense. If you ever wanted some hands-on experience configuring a firewall and learning how they work, PFSense is going to be one of the better alternatives. I mean, it's free. PFSense also has a lot of add-ons that can extend its capabilities, such as providing an option to install a proxy, such as Squid or an IPS like Snort. Well, enough of me talking, let's get started. For this demo, I'll be using VirtualBox as many of you utilize that hypervisor. And to begin, let's head over to PFSense website, which is pfsense.org. And then over on to the right, we can click on download. I'll go ahead and click on download. And for the drop down, we want to select the ISO, which is the second one. Click on add to cart, click on enter cart. And from here, we'll need to create an account. So let's go ahead and do that. We can enter whatever we want. After creating an account, fill in the information and click on complete order. But do make sure you're using a valid email account. Once that's done, click on download now. And the reason why you want to use a valid email account is because you'll also receive an email with the download link. That way, if you ever need the ISO again, you can just head over to your email. Once the file is completed, we can extract this using 7-zip. Now, if you don't have 7-zip, you can go ahead and download it through 7-zip.org and then download it from there. But if you do have it, right click your NetGate installer and then extract to NetGate. And now we should have an ISO image of pfsense-plus-installer. So now let's head over to our virtual box and I'll click on new and type in pfsense. For the ISO image, I'll select pfsense that we just downloaded and I'll leave the type as other and the version as other unknown 64 bit. For the memory, let's at least give it two gigs. Processor, I'll just leave it as one. As for the disk size, I'll say 25 for the time being. If we need more, we can go ahead and expand it, but I'll just leave it as that. And this seems to be pretty good. So let's go ahead and finish that up and start it up. Now that I think about it, with the firewall, we should add another network adapter. So before we start, I'll just go ahead and shut this off. Let's create a NAT network. And to do that, we'll head over to tools at the top, click on the drop down, head over to network, and then click on NAT networks. And right now I already have one called NAT network, but let's go ahead and create one by right clicking, click on create, and I'll change the name to my network. The IPv4 prefix, this will be 192.168.50.0. I will not enable IPv6. I will enable DHCP though. So let's go ahead and hit apply. And we do have a NAT network, beautiful. So let's go over to PFSense, click on settings under our network, click on adapter two and enable the network adapter. So I'll select NAT network and I'll select my DFIR dash network. I'm going to pause here just so we can recap very quickly why I am doing this. In a real world setup, a firewall will typically use two interfaces, one for WAN, which is wide area network. In other words, your internet and one for your LAN, which is local area network. And that is your internal network. Since we're using a type two hypervisor such as VMware or VirtualBox with one physical NIC card, this setting is gonna be a little strange, but it'll still work. Now I do say strange because the WAN interface should typically have a public IP address, but in our case, it's gonna be a private IP. For the adapter one, instead of selecting that, I'm just gonna select bridge. That way it, it will make it less confusing. When we select bridged adapter, this virtual machine with this specific network adapter is going to obtain an IP on the same network as my host machine. It will make a lot more sense later, believe me. So I'll click on okay. The important part here is have two network adapters and then click on start. All right, so starting with the installer, we'll go ahead and accept the terms and I'll click on install setting up the network to continue the installation. Okay, please select the WAN interface. So our WAN interface is going to be network adapter one, which is located on LE zero. 
Now you might be like, how the heck did I know that? Well, if you take a look at the MAC address, so it says 080027EF8879. Click on our virtual machine, go to settings, head over to network, and clicking on our first adapter, which is adapter number one, we can expand advanced and take a look at our MAC address. This one ends in 8879. Adapter number two ends in 3076. So if we go into our virtual box, we see LE0 ends in 8879. So we know for a fact that LE0 is our network adapter one, which is going to be acting as our WAN address. I'll click on okay. Adjust the network operation mode for the WAN LE0 interface if necessary. Eh, I think we're fine. So let's go ahead and hit okay. Select the LAN interface. So we're going to use LE1, hit okay. Adjust the network operation mode for the LAN. So we have our IP address set to 192.168.1.1. DHCP is set to true. And I think we're good to go. Now, I just noticed that this might be a little confusing. Earlier, when we set up our NAT network, so the mydfir-network, we had an IPv4 prefix of 50.0 slash 24. But if you take a look at PFSense, we have an IP address of 192.168.1.1. You might be asking, why is it not 50.1? And simply, it's just that it overrides it. So we can just go ahead and manually change this to 50.0 if we wanted to. But let's say we didn't have PFSense running. Let's just say we had Windows 10 using the NAT network of mydfr-network. It will then grab an IP address from this range of 192.168.50.0. But because PFSense has essentially its own DHCP service, it's assigning it with a 192.168.1.1. That is why you see this mismatch. And as we can see here, it says DHCPD enabled equals true. And again, if we wanted to be consistent, we could change this to 192.168.50, but I'll just leave it as is. Hopefully that makes some sense. So I'll head over to continue and click on OK. Detected VirtualBox Virtual Machine. Please confirm the interface assignment to continue with the installation. So LE1 is LAN and LE0 is WAN. That looks good to me. Click on continue. And now verifying the internet connection. Now we get this window saying this device does not have an active PFSense Plus subscription. That is perfectly fine. We can install the CE software instead. CE is short for Community Edition. We'll click on OK, Stripe, and OK. Last chance. Are you sure you want to destroy the current contents? Yes, I do. And here we get to choose the version of PFSense. Uh, let's choose the current version, which is 2.7.2 .2 as a recording. Once PFSense is finished installing, we can hit Enter and Reboot. And that's right, we need to remove our ISO. So I'll go ahead and power off the machine. Click on Settings, go over to Storage. And our ISO image, we can go ahead and remove it by clicking on the disk and remove disk from virtual drive. Click on OK. Let's start it up. Now, it is a little hard to see, but right here it says, should VLANs be set up now? Yes or no? And we want to say no. So I'll type in N and then enter the WAN interface name or A for auto detection. We'll go ahead and enter in LE0. Next is enter the LAN interface. So that is LE1. Do you want to proceed? Yes, I do. All right. If we take a look at our WAN interface, it has an IP address of 10.0.0.176. Now, in a real environment, this is likely going to be our public IP address. But again, because we are in a lab environment, I'm using a bridged adapter to just show you the different IPs here. And our LAN has an IP address of 192.168.1.1. So if we see the screen here, we know we are finished with PFSense. The next thing to do is head over to a machine that is on the same network as our PFSense. And I'll be using Windows 10. Click on settings. Make sure that my network is using the NAT network of my DFIR-network. Now this Windows 10 machine is in theory in the same network as my PFSense. I might need to adjust some network configurations, but let's take a look. I'll right click the network and internet settings, go over to my change adapter options. Let's right click the network adapter and go into properties, head over to IPv4 and double click that. And currently our IP addresses is being obtained automatically. So what I'll do is type in CMD and then IP config. 
And now we have an IP address that is automatically assigned. So 192.168.1.100, our default gateway is our 1.1 address, which is our pfSense. What this means is that we could likely access our pfSense. Type in 192.168.1.1, and we are presented with your connection is in private. That's okay. Click on advanced and continue. And nice, we are presented with pfSense web interface. To log in, type in the admin as a username and the password as pfSense, all lowercase. So click on this eyeball so you can see pfSense. Awesome, now we're presented with a wizard. So I'll click on next and we can change our host name if we wanted to, but I'll leave it as pfSense, the domain as well, primary DNS server, but I'll just leave it as is, the time server, now let's go next, DHCP, it's okay. I mean, WAN interfaces, if you're in a production environment, probably you might have a static, but DHCP is okay. I'll just leave all of this as default, except, for this right here, the block RFC 1918 private network. When set, this option blocks traffic from IP addresses that are reserved for private networks, such as RFC 1918. This means any networks from 10 slash 8, 172.16 12, or 192.168 slash 16. Now it says here, this option should generally be left turned on unless the WAN network lies in such a private address space too. Now, because our setup is kind of weird, I will uncheck this. Because if you recall, let me head back over into my PF sense here. If you take a look at my WAN address, it is 10.0.0.176. And this is an RFC 1918 address, AKA a private IP address. So I will leave this as unchecked. Click on next, the LAN IP, yeah, that's fine. And then my admin password. I'll change this to an even more secure password. And yeah, you probably guessed it, it is password. <laughs> now it says, congratulations, PFSense is now configured. Awesome, so let's click on the home page here. Let me click on accept and close that out. And we have our two WAN inter and we have our two interfaces, the WAN and the LAN. If you wanted to install third-party packages, you can do so by scrolling up, clicking on this drop-down of system, and go over to package manager. And then we select available packages, and then here's all of the packages that you can install. So for example, if I wanted to install snort, I can just type in snort, and we simply click on install to install that. We can also click on firewall, and then select rules, this is where you can begin creating rules that will help you block and allow traffic coming in or out of your environment. This is where you can start applying your networking theory. You can also click on services next to firewall and even create yourself a captive portal, which is pretty nice. Or if you wanted to, you can even set your own VPN server. PFSense has a ton of capabilities and it is pretty quick to set up. Setting up your own firewall and actually applying your networking knowledge to create rules can really help you understand how it all works together. I highly recommend that you think about spinning up your own instance of PFSense and get some experience with that as you can really use that as a learning opportunity and as a discussion topic for the next time that you're in front of a hiring manager. That is it for the video and I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.